Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about what are some of the not good reasons to take psychiatry as a career option. So it's around 7.30 a.m. and I'm getting ready for work. So I thought I would make this really quick video because one of my observations has been that in regards to psychiatry as a specialization, many people join and then within like the first month of joining, they end up leaving the course. I think the reason could be that they had certain expectations of what psychiatry would be like. And when they actually join and work in that department, they end up realizing that the work is completely different from what they expected it to be. So I use the Neutrogena Clear Face sunscreen. It's a good one. I've been using this for several years now. So let's just get into the video. What do I think is one of the bad reasons to take psychiatry as a career option? The first reason that I can think of is that if your expectation is that psychiatry residency or psychiatry is going to be an easier alternative than other branches, then I think you're in a soup. The reason why I think that is the case is our um, undergrad experience and exposure to psychiatry is a lot more limited. I remember my first 36 hour shift. I started at around, I think around 7.45, I reached the ward. And then it continued and continued and it just didn't end. It ended on the next day evening around 7 p.m. because I'd also had admissions and I had to do workups. And I remember going back to my room. I hadn't done laundry. I hadn't done my dishes. And there was so much work in the room as well to be done. And I was like, you know, what did I get myself into? It's definitely not easy, especially residency. After your residency, in terms of work-life balance, you can strive towards a better work-life balance, especially if you're in academia. You can try to really work in a schedule that suits for you. But again, in private practice, I'm not sure that's very uh, feasible because whoever I know who's doing private practice end up working a lot of hours because inevitably your practice depends on how many hours you put in and it's like your baby, right? So you would end up doing it. The second bad reason to take psychiatry as a career option is if you think that in psychiatry, we don't do a lot of physical examinations and we don't manage physical issues. A lot of psychiatric illnesses could be caused by physical illnesses or medical causes. And we routinely do detailed um, physical exams and appropriate investigations to evaluate for these causes. And there's also a lot of collaboration between neurology and psychiatry. And at least the fundamentals is something that you should be really strong in. There's no way to negotiate that. Even within the residency program, I think there's around three months of postings totally in medicine and neurology combined. And this is in order to give a good foundation so that you don't miss any physical causes. And another thing is individuals with mental health concerns have a greater prevalence of physical comorbidities or physical illnesses. So evaluating for those, managing those a lot of times is done by you. Of course, with appropriate consultations, where there is the facility, you can always refer and they'll give you their opinions. But you have to first identify it, right? Once you identify it and as long as you don't miss it, then they'll be able to help you out. Third reason that I think is um, a bad reason to take psychiatry or not a good reason to take psychiatry is if you think you'll make a lot of money really soon and really easily. Here's what happens. If you take surgery as your specialization, just for a single surgical procedure, you get to charge more, right? You, the amount of money that you're earning per procedure is going to be good for several reasons. You know, it could be the number of years of training, the skill that's required, the risk that that surgery poses. They're able to charge more per procedure, even for a simple procedure, let alone complex procedures. There are no such procedures in psychiatry. Now, or let's take medicine professionals. In an hour, they're able to see five to six patients. Like they'll usually see around 10 to 15 minutes. So on a minimum, they're able to see at least four patients in private practice. Whereas in psychiatry, if you see the history taking the evaluation process takes a lot more time. So per patient, you end up spending at least 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, which honestly sometimes is less. You end up spending even one to two hours and several of these hours, but you're not able to charge as much as a surgical procedure. 
So what that basically means is that it's a little more difficult to earn money in psychiatry in private practice. Although in government or teaching institutes, I think the pay may be more or less same. But if you go to private practice, I think it is uh, per patient, per procedure, the amount of money earned is lesser. So there's more number of years until you make like really good money. I do have a video on uh, income in psychiatry and what are like the different factors which could predict your income in psychiatry. So definitely look into that and I think you'll get a better idea. I forgot to say I recently hit 500 subscribers and I'm so, so happy. Thank you so much for your support. Last step. Let's brush my head. I got bangs recently. Um, it's been about, it's growing out. I'm not sure why I got it because I don't like using products in my hair and I need to like straighten it. So now it's just like a weird uh, curl that's always there and it's kind of growing out. I am glad about that. I hope it grows out soon and I can go back to my original hairstyle. It's around 8 a.m. I'm going to the OPD now. Bye bye. Take care. I hope this video was helpful. I think uh, this is the first time I'm recording with the front camera. So I don't know. Um, maybe my eye contact may not be appropriate. Please forgive me, but the content is genuine. Oh, take care. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.